This is one of Clooney the Scourge's Rome Total War online battles. I am playing as the Brutii Romans, and my opponent, uh, Praetorian Quintus, or just Quintus, is playing as the Julii Romans. I've taken two units of Town Watch, who I've set on loose formation and put in front of my battle line in order to absorb enemy Pillar uh, when his legionaries have been set on fire at will. I've taken six units of urban cohorts and two legionary first cohorts uh, mingled among them in the battle line. I've taken six units of Praetorian cavalry massed on my right and four of legionary cavalry who began the battle in the woods on my left and my intention was to spring them as a trap to swing around the flank of the enemy once he attacked me. However, I changed my plan when I identified that my opponent had taken archers and therefore would be able to force me to attack him. So I sent them to join the uh, Praetorian cavalry on my right. Now my opponent has taken six Roman archers, an identical infantry force to my own, six urban cohorts and two legionary first cohorts, uh, and six Praetorian cavalry, which he has begun in his opening deployment split three to each wing. This means that I have a superior cavalry in numbers, uh, 10 to his 6, uh, while uh, he has a missile component and I don't. You'll probably be able to guess that this was a high denarii battle, and when playing as the Romans uh, with high denarii there's no real reason to take anything but the most expensive and powerful units. Now, as the battle began, my opponent began marching toward me at a sedate pace. Uh, he also began shifting some of his uh, infantry, two of his legionary first cohorts, both of them I mean, and one unit of urban cohorts, over toward the left, perhaps recognizing that I'd massed my cavalry on that, uh, on that wing, that's his left I mean, and uh, he wanted his infantry available to support his cavalry if it came to a direct head-to-head melee. So I rushed my army in. I knew that I had to rush the matter since I had no missile component and he did. His troops met my town watch and immediately crushed them as you would expect. This means that I got the first pillar throw. In fact the only pillar throw because his infantry did not attempt to use their javelins. My legionaries have been deployed in thick fighting blocks while his are in thin lines. Uh, my legionary first cohorts are in that main infantry battle, while his have been detailed over to the right to meet my cavalry. Consequently, I'm pretty confident at that point that I'm going to win the infantry engagement in the center. Now, if we travel back in time, by a minute and a half and or so, and take a look at what happened on the right with my cavalry, that's quite a formidable array of uh, Roman squadrons there. It must have been weighing on his mind. Uh, quite a great deal at that point, enough for him to split uh, his legionary uh, standard morale boosting infantry away from the main line and to rush uh, those units of cavalry that he'd split over on his, his right, my left, to join them. I seized the opportunity to send one of my units of cavalry over to join the infantry battle. I can do that since I've got 10 units and I still outnumber him in cavalry. And that will speed my victory in the center. Now a series of maneuvers takes place as we each uh, attempt to achieve envelopments with our cavalry. I send units swinging wide to come around to, the, to either side. Uh, and a scrum begins. However, I found at this point that having such a numerical superiority did have its downside, which was that I had so many units that it was difficult to coordinate them all effectively. Consequently, I did not achieve the uh, true envelopment I was looking for, and his infantry are fully engaged. And with those legionary standards inspiring those Praetorian cavalry, he has a definite advantage especially with the natural edge uh, supplied by uh, infantry who are holding out against cavalry in a sustained uh, melee. Now you, you can see that I've managed to send one of my units of infantry away from the battle line to support them, but it's far too late to be able to achieve the same kind of re results that my opponent has been getting from them. And my uh, forces on my right, the cavalry, uh, begin to disintegrate 
pretty quickly. It now becomes a question of who will be able to send their forces uh, to transfer them to the other area of the battle before the, uh, their opponent does. Now, uh, back over on the left and the center, let's see what was going on during that time. Uh, my infantry and that one unit of cavalry I sent are uh, rolling up the enemy line, uh, which now appear to be completely hopelessly enveloped by uh, overwhelming numbers. My opponent's archers are able to support his troops, uh, but urban cohorts and Praetorian cavalry and uh, legionary first cohorts have all got excellent armor, and those are only Roman archers, not archer auxilia, so they don't have this, the kind of uh, penetrating, striking power necessary to inflict uh, much in the way of casualties. And there you can see that by rolling up the line in that way, I've completely uh, dominated the center and the left. I must now rush to fix and engage the enemy cavalry on the other wing before my opponent can send them on um, on wide flanking maneuvers and be able to strike at me at will. I'm not going to be able to do anything about those archers uh, on skirmish mode. My infantry aren't going to be able to catch them. I'm just going to have to trust in my armor. He will have six uh, damaged units of Praetorian cavalry, uh, two legionary first cohorts and one urban cohort. I will have two legionary first cohorts and uh, five urban cohorts. We will now determine who truly deserves to survive this battle. Uh, my fighting men are ready for it, are his. Neither of us are likely to be uh, more greatly fatigued at this point than the other. So it comes down to uh, attempts by, by both of us uh, to send units uh, to outflank the other. As you can see there, he's tried to send cavalry around my left, and I've sent a unit of infantry around my right. Uh, I also have regrouped uh, units of cavalry that I'm going to bring charging back in, there as you can see. And pretty soon we have a heaving mass of flailing, twisting limbs like some kind of monstrously perverted Roman orgy. Now there's a unit of regrouped uh, cavalry that I haven't noticed I have available to me yet and my opponent is taking advantage of its uh, stationary position to use his archers to inflict heavy casualties on it. All the time uh, the infantry and cavalry are mixing it up. Uh, my opponent is pouring arrows in at uh, almost point-blank range for some of these units. At this point, he became sufficiently desperate to realize that uh, the situation was turning against him and he tried to use archers in melee to charge into the rear. Uh, when infantry is fixed in a melee, charging into the rear even with feeble archers can sometimes be enough to tip them over the uh, routing point. The infantry lines have resolved into a kind of double S shape there as though they were trying to send a signal for Superman to come to their aid. That's his general who's routed and is fleeing the battle by himself as the only survivor of his unit. That's pretty pathetic. The gods will not be pleased by that. Now one consequence of having his missile troops pour archery fire into me at point blank range is that, as you can see there, he's just slaughtered a bunch of his own regrouped uh, cavalry by accident. Or was it an accident? Perhaps the leader of the Roman archer unit simply owed one of those men some money. Now I'm uh, compressing the uh, infantry line on my left and as they begin to rout uh, my troops turn to pursue them and the Julii take the opportunity to pull two of his infantry units clear as you can see there. Perhaps he had the idea of uh, trying to mount a last stand uh, he switched to flame arrow to try to reduce my morale and cause me to tip over the routing point, but it's far, far too late, as you can see. Uh, he could run me ragged around the battlefield, shooting at me with the rest of his ammunition, but he decides that it is uh, useless at this point and admits defeat. Test studio formation would have made that strategy useless anyway.